Haunted Mansion Holiday has returned for 2024, but you may not be able to ride it if you don't know this one trick. You're listening to Castle Talk Radio. We're live on the airwaves with Becca and Jessica. Now let's jump into this week's episode. Halloween time is here for 2024. We have some returning favorites and some new things you'll be sure you want to check out at Disneyland Resort. Definitely. And there's some big changes this year to some of the returning favorites that you'll need to know if you want to experience them. Exactly. So let's start over at Disneyland Park. We have some of our classic favorite Halloween time things like a pumpkin festival on Main Street. I love the decor there. Giant pumpkin Mickey greeting you for photo ops. What else? Our favorite characters come out in their Halloween outfits and this year, like the last few years, they have brand new costumes that they're going to be wearing. So cute. I love that they're thinking up new costumes every year because we have to do the same when we're going to Oogie Boogie Bash. So excited to meet those characters. Mostly you're going to see them right at the beginning of Main Street in there greeting people as you come in and out of Disneyland. Yes, definitely. Uh, one thing I want to mention, though, is because we didn't say this at the beginning. It's August, Jessica. And and Halloween time, Haunted Mansion's already open, Haunted Mansion holiday. And Halloween time kicks off just two days from when we're airing this episode. That's early, earlier than ever at Disneyland Resort. So you still have time to plan a Halloween vacation. A lot of times by the time it kicks off, it's really hard to plan one. So you can plan a Halloween vacation still and have that amazing ticket deal that goes through September 26 for three day tickets. So before we get too deep in this episode, I just wanted to put that out there. Don't skip this episode because you think you're not gonna make it. You still can. And we would love to help you save money by visiting getawaytoday.com slash castle talk and booking through our partners. Yeah, in fact, open up that tab right now as you're listening. That's getawaytoday.com slash castle talk. And you'll be able to see those discounts already applied, especially that deal that you can go in August and or September because this three-day ticket is amazing. And you'll get to go in, you'll get to take a picture with that Mickey Jack-O-Lantern on Main Street, see the characters. And as we work our way into the parks, you're gonna see some other familiar things or new to you. Now, you mentioned Haunted Mansion Holiday. That started in July. So we also have Halloween earlier than ever, Haunted Mansion Holiday earlier than ever, but things are kind of messy around there. So (laughs) literally, messy because there's a lot of construction and things going on but how are we going to get on this attraction this year becca and you've already done it so you need to tell us how we can get on because it's not just as simple as getting in line or getting a lightning lane yeah neither of those are offered this year at all the only way to enjoy haunted mansion holiday this year which it has some new things and not just the gingerbread house is new i spotted a couple other new things in there um but the only way to do it is a virtual queue we love and hate virtual queues <laughs> they are a little stressful but actually we had no problem getting one at the 7 a.m time so you can join the virtual queue twice a day and actually we had no trouble the noon day either we joined two days so i got to write it twice and If you have a reservation, because you do need reservations still at Disneyland, for Disneyland Park, you can join the 7 a.m. lot of virtual queue. You need to be on there, though, 6.55, start getting your party together. Um, Jessica, I think, has a great article about virtual queue, right? Exactly, yeah, because we've used this for lots of different things. We've used it for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. We've used it for Avengers Campus, very short-lived, if at all. and different rides, like Rise of the Resistance, things like that. So we have the system down. It's documented for you. Make sure you review that before you go because you don't want to miss out. And Becca, you said you wrote it twice. You're talking once each day, correct? Yes. You can only ride once a day. And so the first day we were actually starting in California Adventure, the day that Haunted Mansion Holiday opened. And so we could not join the 7 a.m. 
Q because of the fact that we start in California Adventure. Um, and you can't park cop until 11. They have one at noon. You can join that as well. Again, set an alarm, especially if you're in the parks because you will get busy doing rides. Mm -hmm. Set that alarm early, like 15 to 20 minutes before so that you can make sure you're not in the middle of doing Guardians of the Galaxy, dropping, trying to get the virtual queue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So um, that one was fairly easy. We got it at noon. We were able to go back to our hotel for an hour or two. And then our time was getting close. There is the one thing, and hopefully they've straightened this out because this was the first week. We were told we were close to our time. And then all of a sudden it says it's two hours later. It's going to be two extra hours. And we were already heading back. We're like, okay, we'll do other things. We'll watch Magic Happens, this or that. And then we get in there and all of a sudden it changes back to the original time and we were called up. So we were really lucky we'd gone mm -hmm. over there because you only have one hour to redeem that virtual queue. Got it. It's just like a lightning lane. You get one hour, but the problem is you only get one hour from when you're notified. So make sure you don't go so far away or that you're not like okay. taking a nap and sleeping through that notification because you want to make sure you get on that ride when it's your turn. Okay. So I'm really curious though. How was the process once you got there? Like, are you walking through a construction site or? Like, no, I don't know thank goodness. On. So the front of Haunted Mansion is visible now. The, where the old queue was that would wind up back and around, that is blocked off by walls. Um, and so it's pretty similar. They've moved the carriage to a new spot where it's front and center. And we just scanned in. They did have us, I believe, I'm trying to remember. I think we had to tap our virtual queue on the lightning lane things and then we also sense. had to um go show it to a cast member okay. and i would say the weight um we did have a mobility device so we did go in a little bit different line but even looking over at the other line i would say it was maybe 10 15 minutes at most they were really being careful about how early they called people back they weren't calling huge groups where you're still going to have an hour line like you can at tron and guardians of the galaxy over in walt disney world yeah, and the whole purpose of this virtual queue is that they do not have the space to hold people in a queue, and they wanted to give us the opportunity to ride Haunted Mansion Holiday, even in the midst of this construction. So kudos to the team who are putting this together. Thank you to the cast members on the front lines. They're organizing um, all the logistics because that is such an essential part of Halloween time. Let's talk about some other ride overlays that we're going to get this year, which are pretty standard um, across the resort. Yeah, so um, most there's no there's no other ones in Disneyland. For a long time, we had um, Ghost Galaxy on Space Mountain. They got rid of that. I always blame my son because they got rid of it the year after he got traumatized by that ride because it was scarier than the original Space Mountain. But over across at Disney California Adventure, we do get one pretty good change layover, and then we get two that are very small. You may not even notice it. Mm -hmm. So the, the two small ones we'll do first, and that's Mater's Junkyard Jamboree becomes Mater's Jamboree. Jamboo Luigi's Rollickin' Roasters turns into Luigi's Honkin' hall Oween, And of course, we can't mention those two without mentioning that it's not just those two rides that get a layover. The entire Cars Land is totally decked out. It becomes Radiator Screams instead of Radiator Springs. And they do the Hall Halloween. And then even um, though Radiator Springs doesn't get an overlay in the ride at night, they do like spookier colors of lights over there in the rocket formations. Yep, and your favorite cars in their costumes. Yes, yes, they're in their car costumes. And then the other thing I almost forgot is, so every night at dusk, they do like this party, right? It's usually Shaboom that plays. Not during Halloween, and I'm not going to tell you what the song is. You'll just have to go and find out. But it's so much fun to be there as the light neon lights come on, and they play a little Halloween tune. And right after that, you can make your way through the back entry slash exit into Avengers Campus and go on what now? Monsters After Dark, Guardians of the Galaxy, Monsters After Dark, which is a continuation from the regular ride. 
One thing about this ride is that it only runs part of the day. So they close Guardians of the Galaxy around three, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then an hour or so later, it reopens as Monsters After Dark. Has an original song, so you're not going to get that cool 80s soundtrack. It is more of a heavy metal type song um, and an original storyline. So my husband loves it. I know, Jessica, you actually don't, even though Guardians of the Galaxy is your favorite ride. And I personally don't like the music for it, so I don't go. But but it it's is music. great. I mean, it's still a great ride. It's just still a great ride. Just doesn't have the nostalgia from the other soundtracks. So those are all the overlays. Okay, so we need to talk about entertainment. We've got parades, we've got fireworks, but let's kind of talk about which things are available, which things are not, which things are Halloween. And then of course, a new one that let's just kick it off with that new one, new to the general attending audience at California Adventure. Yeah, so I'm kind of upset about this. I'm gonna tell you right now. And I'll tell you why after, but the show inside of the Disney Junior Dance Party Disney stage that was available at Oogie Boogie Bash is now available all day long to guests. And that is Mickey and Minnie's Mickey's. Trick. No, I'm and always treat. messing this up. It's Mickey's trick and treat show. So there's some tricks and some treats. Um, when it was for Oogie Boogie Bash, you got candies you left. I don't know if they'll still do that. I think they kind of would have to because the whole thing talks about getting candy at the end. So it'd be kind of weird. The reason I'm upset about this has nothing to do with me not wanting everyone to enjoy it. It's just, it's another thing they've taken away from Oogie Boogie Bash that devalues that ticket. Um, and yes, it probably wasn't the most popular, but it was one of the few things that was new and exclusive that was aimed at kids, younger right. kids. So yeah. that's my problem with it. I, I have no problem with the show. It's a very cute show. I do think it's great that people will be able to enjoy that, but I'm just mad that they didn't put something else in place to make Oogie Boogie Bash still sure. as good a value. Yeah, exactly. So a couple tips on that one. If you're going to Oogie Boogie Bash with Littles and you want to go to the trick and treat show, do that during mix-in hours because now that's going to be available during that time. And you don't have to necessarily keep your kids up as late just to be able to go to this show that is really geared towards them. Then, of course, if you're not going to Oogie Boogie Bash or have never been and you have littles, make this a must do on your list because it's brand new to the general audience uh, at the theme parks this year. And that's in Hollywood Land in California Adventure. All right. Staying at California Adventure for shows. World of Color interesting thing that they've done since the second year of Oogie Boogie Bash. They teased us the first year by giving us World of Color Villainous. And everyone loved the show, but once again, this is something they've taken away. And I think pretty soon it's going to really harm eventually, maybe, maybe not, the Oogie Boogie sells because they keep taking these things away that make it special. Um, they also had a mad tea party like descendants dance party that they mm -hmm. took away, which I wish they bring right. back. So they're just taking these things away. It's kind of sad, but at the same time, um, I'm pretty sure that the world of color is just really expensive to operate. Mm -hmm. And so I could see why maybe that was axed. Yogi Boogie Bash tickets are really expensive to purchase. Anyways, we'll move on. So if you're going, you won't be seeing a Halloween themed world of color, period. Um, but over at Disneyland, no, 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 still California Adventure, we have a parade that is Oogie Boogie Bash exclusive, and that is frightfully fun. I hope we're not confusing you, but um, parade only Oogie Boogie Bash, but something that everyone can enjoy with tickets to Disneyland is the nighttime show over there for Halloween. Yeah, so Halloween Screams, it's one of the better firework shows that Disneyland has, um, just with the story and everything. So during the week, normally, it will just be the projections and the music, which are still great. But I think that this show really is worth, if you're there on a weekend watching, then you can watch it on Main Street, you can watch it from right in front of the castle, Rivers of America, or over by It's a Small World. And um, yeah, it's a great Halloween 
show and it's hosted by Jack Skellington. Of course, he's like all over the parks this time of year and we love it. <laughs> yeah, it's a great Halloween tradition. I, I think it's one that you absolutely want to do. All right, before we wrap up, we do need to talk about Halloween time food because that is a huge thing at Disneyland Resort. There's a lot of returning things and a lot of new things. So many things you really just cannot do it all. We actually have a free printable for you to take down some notes, check out the foodie guide. I have that listed on the happiest blog on earth and make sure you go to castletalkradio.com to get your freebie for this. So Becca, I'm going to shout out a couple of things that sounded good to me. Okay. So Jolly Holiday always has a big assortment of Halloween time foods and they have a bunch of new ones this year, including old ones. So one of them that seems really cute is the Jack-O-Lantern Mickey pumpkin macaroon. So I'm wondering if this is going to look like the Jack-O-Lantern on Main Street. It's a macaroon shell filled with caramel buttercream and pumpkin cheesecake. And that will be available starting at the beginning of Halloween time. They also have a spiced bun cake. So that's a spice cake with cream cheese and it's topped with a purple glaze and sprinkles and a Mickey Mouse chocolate decoration. So all these are super, super cute. Um, another thing that they have is some donuts and drinks in Mickey's Toontown at Daisy's. They have a caramel apple type of cold brew that sounds really good. Um, you can find all kinds of treats and things at Candy Palace. They'll also have similar treats like caramel apples and things like that on Buena Vista Street and also at Marceline's in downtown Disney. And um, they'll have a poison apple, caramel apple. So it looks like um, exactly like what you would expect from the film from Snow White. There is an iced Mexican hot chocolate at Rancho in Frontierland. That sounds good, especially because it's still hot at Halloween time. So having those um, cold drinks is really fantastic. Okay, Jessica, you're speaking of the Mexican hot chocolate. You, I have to tell everyone, you can meet Miguel and Mirabelle both over in that area by Rancho. But during Halloween time, they also have another celebration for Dios de los Mortes. And it's a different celebration because they are different holidays and it goes through November 2nd. But over there, they do that musical celebration of Coco. And a lot of times they have special food items over there. And it's mm -hmm. in the Plaza de la Familia over at the Paradise Garden Grill and Boardwalk Pizza. So anything you found over there that looks interesting? Yeah, so I'm still pulling it up. Like I said, this is probably like a 4,000 word article. But over at the pizza place over there, they do have um, like a spicy pizza that they're having and it has hot spicy meats and it's drizzled with a ranch, which totally speaks to me. I absolutely love that. And I think there is, let's see, of course there's churros. Oh my goodness. I cannot even find that, but I know that they have a bunch of other things in that area, not only at, um, Paradise Garden Grill, but at like the food carts around there. I think there's some tamales and all kinds of different little things there. <laughs> yeah, there's just so much food every season. And of course, we've talked before about the churro trends and the holiday churros. But yeah, you will have so much you want to try. That's why I love Jessica's freebie that we're giving you. And that's like it it lists the different lands and things, right? So you can like yeah. write down your must tries in each area because looking through the list over and over, <laughs> it's hard. Disney food, the general theme for Halloween is going to be spicy. So like at um, Carnation Cafe, they have a spicy chicken sandwich. They'll have stuff that just adds a little bit more kick to it or blueberries as well. Like at Corn Dog Castle, they have a, a corn dog with like a blueberry sauce on top. So we've got like a little sweet and savory because it's like purple and the theming, a lot of non-alcoholic and a lot of alcoholic drinks to choose from that are themed to Halloween time. So a lot of what we like to say photogenic food items. So I'm sure we'll be sharing all about those on social media as well. 
Yeah. And speaking really quick before we go, let's just mention you and I are both going to be down there the first week of September. So be sure that you're following each of us on our own social accounts and we'll link those down in the show notes. Happy Halloween. And we hope to see you at Disneyland this spectacular season.